artist friends, are you ready to draw something great? Or maybe I should say, are you ready to draw something wild? Today I'm going to show you how to draw a wild thing. This is from Where the Wild Things Are by Maurice Sendak, and this is one of my favorite books of all time. I can read this book to my kids without even looking at the words. It starts off, The night Max wore his wolf suit and made mischief of one kind and another. His mother called him Wild Thing, and Max said, I'll eat you up. So he was sent to bed without eating anything at all. Now, you guys know that when Max goes into his room and the walls become the vines around and the forest grows, that he finds some great friends who have yellow eyes and terrible claws and he becomes the king. So today, I am gonna show you how to draw a wild thing monster. And you can draw it with whatever you want, but I'm gonna suggest if you have oil pastels, I'd love it if you could draw it with oil pastels, or if you don't, you can use crayons because I want to show you a fun technique when we're done doing the drawing that you can use to color it in. If you don't have those, you can do it in pencil just like this one. I think you're going to have fun no matter what and you will see what a great artist you are. We're going to break this down step by step and make it really simple so that you too can draw a wild thing. Okay, artists, are you ready? Let's start off by drawing our monsters big kind of fat head like this just a circle okay and now we're going to draw two curved lines and that's where his body is going to begin and then we're going to draw his arms and they're going to go up like this and up like this and then I want you to stop right there okay let's do the same thing over here arms up arms up and stop okay now this wild thing is hanging onto a tree branch so we can just see the top parts of his claws i want you to come up here above the arm and draw one two three claws now those look like curved triangles kind of okay so do that right there and right here one two three Claws. Okay, now we're going to leave that alone for just a second and we're going to draw some horns on his head. These are also curved triangles. So we're going to draw a curved line like this and then just come right back down. Now at the bottom of the horn, just make it curved at the bottom. Okay, now let's draw one on this side just facing this way. So curve in like that, back down. Whoop. Let's straighten that line just a little bit. Remember, if you make a mistake, you can always draw over it, make it into something else, don't worry. Okay, we've got the horns, we've got his claws. Okay, now let's work a little bit on his face. He has a very funny nose. It just goes around, kind of comes in like that, two little curves, and around again, okay? And then this mouth goes almost all the way across the face, and we'll draw his beard right over the edges. And then he has some triangle teeth. And notice they're spread apart, they're not touching. Okay, now, I love the part where it says they roll their terrible eyes and show their terrible claws. So the terrible eyes are big, huge circles. One, two. And he's looking sideways. So let's draw the pupils over here. So we're gonna do another circle this time, color it in like that. Okay, and then he's got a couple wrinkle lines right here by his snout, because he is a monster. All right, now we get to do his crazy hair. Right in between the horns, we're gonna draw lines going up, and he has some bangs. So we're gonna draw some lines coming down to his eyeballs and kind of over his horns. On the sides, we're gonna draw it straight out, right up to where you did that mouth and end about right there, and then same with this, straight out until you get here. Now right here it gets just a little bit longer because he has kind of a beard. So just make your lines a little bit longer right there. Okay, now that's really taking shape and looking like a wild thing. Something that I love to do to make these horns stand up is just to do some curved lines like this. And there we go. Okay, now let's draw the branch. I want you to start all the way at the edge of your paper, and I want you to draw a line that comes just underneath 
the top of those claw marks. Stop, and all the way off your paper. Okay, now draw one more. I want you this time just come up just a little bit like that so that it looks like a tree branch is hooked on. And right through and over. Okay, now if there's extra room here, I want you to just take that line up if there's extra room in the tree. Okay, take that arm line up and draw a curve. Okay, I think the reason this monster has always been my favorite, one, my little brother got him in a stocking once from Santa Claus, and two, because he has a striped shirt. So let's make some stripes. Remember that when we do stripes and we're doing them something round like a body, we have to make them curved. So let's do some curved lines for our stripes and some curved lines up the arm for stripes this way and down this way. Okay, now the legs are just a tiny bit tricky, but I know you can do it because you guys are great artists. I'm gonna hold my book because I wanna make sure I do it the right way for you. Okay, first of all, we're just gonna draw a curved line right here. That's just kind of his bottom, but his legs are kind of up. You can see, because he's hanging. So we're gonna do his legs like this. This first one, the knee comes down, just one curved line like that, and then another curved line right there. Okay, that one's really easy. And then let's just draw this foot. We're just gonna go down and around. Okay, pretty easy. This one, the foot's up, so it's a little bit of a different perspective and some foreshortening, but you guys can do it. All right, we're gonna draw his knee with just a curved line like that. And then we're gonna draw a curved line right there. And from this, we're gonna come around and across and back down, okay? Not too bad. All right, now let's just finish by connecting those and we'll draw some claws just like we did up here. So we're gonna draw one claw, two, three. So just curve out and back in. One, two, three. And there we have our drawing. Okay, all we need to do is some details. I love on the bottom of his legs, he kind of has scales. He looks like he's furry and feathery and scaly all at the same time. All we have to do is a little U shape like this. Okay, and some across his middle. But not on the underside of his foot. There's one more thing that we didn't do yet, and it's a tail. He has a big, bushy tail. And you, wherever your paper is, you can make it fit. If it goes off the edge, that's okay, or you can turn it however you need it to do so it fits on your paper. But do a big, bushy tail, so a big, curved line, and another one. And then you just, I just want you to keep adding curved lines like this so that we can tell that it's made out of hair. And there's his tail. Okay. The last thing I want you to do is just add a couple vines because they're swinging in trees with vines. It's very easy. I just want you to draw two lines over here and maybe one that comes over here. I'll let you decide if you want to add more, you go right ahead. And then just add some leaves. Curve, curve. Curve out and then back in. Out, back in. Okay, we'll just put a couple more leaves on here and a few on here. Okay, now you are ready to color in. So I drew a wild thing just a little bit earlier right here. And I did mine with oil pastels because I love how bright they are and how bold they are. And you'll notice that when you're drawing with oil pastels, when you start coloring the colors, they smear a little bit and that's okay. It doesn't matter. This is supposed to be fun and we know the oil pastels smear and it's, it's all right. Sometimes my white turned a little bit blue, but I still think it's great. So I have my wild thing and I've colored them in. Now when you're gonna put some watercolor paint over the top of oil pastels, you wanna make sure that you've colored everything in a color, especially your white. So that means that I did my horns and I did my claws and my toenails and my teeth white because when you paint over your paper, if you don't color it in, 
they'll turn blue or whatever color you're coloring. So I made sure I colored in everything really good. And you got to do the yellow eyes because, you know, it is in the story. But you can color your wild thing whatever color you want. Once you have that all done, there's just a few things. I like to add just a couple dots because my favorite one in the book is at night when it's kind of out in the moonlight and there's stars. So I'm going to add a couple yellow dots. And I'm pressing nice and hard and close together. And you probably can't even see that white, but once I paint, then you'll be able to see it. So I'm just going to add a couple dots in there. And then I'm going to get my paints. What I'm going to do is take my watercolors. And watercolors work best when they're wet. So I'm going to make sure my blue is nice and wet. And I'm going to bring some out here in my lid. And then I'm going to get my green nice and wet. And bring out here my lid and mix these together. And I want to add some water. Because when I start painting, I want to have enough of my color to go over the whole painting. I don't want to have to come mix it again because I might not mix the same color. So I like to mix it all at once. And I'm actually going to pick a bigger brush. This brush isn't going to go very far. And this is kind of a big piece of paper. So I'm going to pick a little bit bigger brush and take my paint. And then I'm just going to go right over my oil pastels. Watercolors are going to wipe right off your counter. So you don't have to worry about getting it on the table. I mean, make sure that you're OK and you've got something down if you need to. But they'll wipe off. So then I'm just going to come along here and paint right over all of my oil pastel. This is called a resist painting because the oils in the oil pastels or even crayons will resist the water of the watercolor. So it won't go anywhere where you've colored. We'll stay, we'll stay that color. But all the background and any spaces that you leave white will turn whatever color you're doing. And you can do this with any kind of painting, any drawing or painting that you do. If you do it with crayons or oil pastels, you can always go in and do the background and paint. I think it's a lot easier to paint a background than to color it in with crayons. And there you go. You guys did a great job today. And remember, if your painting looks different than mine, then you did it right, because you are the artist of your own paper. I want you to always remember that. It can look however you want it to look. You guys did a great job. Remember that you are a great artist. Keep drawing, and I'll see you next time. Bye.